I'm Jason Waller here with the BAM Podcast. That's right, business and money podcast. You want to make money? You want to conquer business? You want to go ahead and get that mindset right to take you to the next level and level up? You got to listen to the show. We're going to have all kinds of guests on there, billionaires, millionaires, athletes, actors, you name it. We're going to have them on here. They're going to be talking about their success, their struggles, their life, their hardship. I'm going to talk about my success, my struggle, my life, my hardship. So tune in. BAM! Jason Waller here with the BAM Podcast. That's business, attitude, and money. Top five entrepreneur podcasts out there. And I am here in Utah with an OG, a gangster for life. This guy has built companies. This guy is changing the game. The lions, not sheep. My man, Sean Whalen. How you doing, baby? What's up, man? Great to be here. Hey, Great I have to have you here. Yeah, I, I'm here to the, be with in you. The, in the jam, you know what I'm saying? Fucking the boxing ring right oh, yeah, behind right. us, right? Oh, yeah. How much how, do you kick a lot of ass in here? I get my ass kicked in here. Yeah, we spar, we train in here, dude. This, I I've seen it. some of the videos. Dude. I love I, fighting. I, I could tell. And this is a perfect setup. Like, not many people have a fucking boxing ring. I wanted a at ring. Business. I wanted like a proper ring, you know, because you can set up mats and shit like that. But I found this dude in LA and, and he made this ring custom, made this canvas for us and stuff. So it's been Don't. fun. It's fun it's having it. Well, hey, you've got an awesome location here. Uh, you know, big fan, big supporter. Uh, you know, I, I was telling you before we started the show, my old man is like one of your biggest fans ever. He's like, dude, you tell him, keep kicking ass oh, yeah. and saying his shit. So uh, he kind of got me uh, on to you. So really glad that we can put this together. But one of the things I, I really want to dive into is this is the Business Attitude Podcast, but we tell all kinds of real fucking stories. We yeah. talk about wins. We talk about losses. We talk about struggles. We talk about being in the fucking hole and climbing out and being a fighter. And you talk about how you like fighting. And you like being like the fucking lion and you're different than everybody else. And a lot of people, I think they somewhat know your story, but they don't know the story of how hard it fucking was when you built up a business and you were crushing it. And then you had to file bankruptcy and close that shit down and start over. Talk a little bit about that so they understand what those days look like before you got to where you're at now. Dude, they're all learning lessons, man. That's what I, you know, I'm 44 and I, I think about life. I think about where I've been, what I've done, right? I'm like, what are the rules? What is good? What is bad? Like, what is success? You know, what is failure? And I, and I think back to my, my journey and I grew up in a single parent home. There's no silver spoon near my mouth. There's no rich family. There's nobody like, you know, if I fall flat on my face, like somebody's just going to write me a big ass check and, and bail me out kind of a deal. But I've always been, I've always been fiercely independent. I tried working a real job. I had a real job for a couple of years and it was like, I just hated it. Right. And uh, ever, I mean, the last real job I had was 24 years ago, real paycheck. And so I always tell people, I'm like, nobody's given me anything for the last 24 years as far as like money goes. And so, you know, building businesses is hard, man. And, and I have chosen my early career, my early days, I was the egomaniac, right? Like I would just build it and build it and go and nobody could tell me anything. It was just like raw. I didn't have coaches, didn't have mentors. It was like, what the fuck are you going to teach me? I'm Sean Whalen, right? right? Major ego, major ego. I still have a giant ego, but I'm a lot smarter now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but, but you yeah, got to have an ego to be successful. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You absolutely do. And anybody who tells you you don't, they're, they're totally full of shit and they've never yeah. done anything because you have to have that edge. Yeah. You have to have that edge. We were talking about Conor McGregor before and you know that you have to have an edge and most people that don't have that edge will call you ego. They'll call that ego. They will say you're presumptuous. They will say you need to simmer down and all this sort of shit. But the truth of the matter is you have to have some giant fucking balls yeah. to build anything. I mean, you look at anybody who's built anything of, of, of note, you know, Apple, Microsoft, any of these companies, these major companies, you have to have some giant balls to do that. You have to have some audacity. You have to have ego. So, I, you know, my early days, I did that and I, and I took my lumps. I lost a lot of money when the market crashed and I was over leveraged and signed on the dotted line when I shouldn't have signed on the dotted line. And, and I ended up, you know, losing millions and millions and millions of dollars and, and it was a tough spot. And, and I looked at myself as a failure. I was like, this is a failure. But the reality is what I learned there taught me invaluable lessons about economics, about capitalism, about business, about who I was, about hiring, firing the right team. I would have never learned that. I, I could have gone to every Ivy League school on the planet and I would never would have learned what I learned in going through a bankruptcy about business, about yeah. myself, about leadership. And so I don't look at any of these things as failures. You know what I mean? They were hard as fuck. I mean, shit, building this business, you know, it's, it's hard as shit. Building any business is hard as shit. Um, but I'm grateful for the lessons that I've had, especially the ones that have come at, you know, a great financial price, a great emotional price, because those truly have been you know, the refiner's fire. That's where I've learned the most. The, you know, the, yeah. the, the strongest metal is forged in the hottest fire. 
So at the end of the day, it's kind of like you keep forging yourself in these fires and eventually you get stronger and bigger and stronger and bigger. And, and uh, I wouldn't trade any of these experiences for the world, man. Yeah. So you, you said two things I want to uh, touch on. First, no one's giving you anything 24 years. You had to go out and fucking earn yeah. it. And a lot of people don't appreciate that. Uh, I do because it, obviously there's fire in your belly, right? Yeah. There's fire in your belly when you're working a nine to five, when you're working for somebody else. Something inside of you said, I have to do my own shit. Right. I have to create my own fucking map. I don't want to build something for somebody else. I want to build something for myself. And not everybody has to be that way. Like right. the world can't be everybody's an entrepreneur. Totally. Everyone's a lion. The world's not made that way. But if people have it in their fucking belly right. and people are sitting there festering and holding it in, what would you say to those people from where Sean was 24 years ago to fucking go explore what would you say to them dude the, the the smartest move today that anybody can make is to copy what works yeah. i i mean i coach thousands of people i have thousands of people in the lion's den in my coaching groups like between that and you know other people that i work with and i tell them the same thing copy what works man i didn't get that 24 years ago i was looking at it going i'm just gonna I, i'm the only guy who's ever flipped houses i'm the only guy that's ever built this right and so i was trying to do all these things that i thought i was like reinventing the wheel but i really wasn't and it was stubborn. It was stupid. So there's people like, if, if you truly want to build something big, it's already been done. Yeah. You're not reinventing water. You're not reinventing the wheel. You're not reinventing a car or sales or solar or boxing or a cell phone or an energy drink, right? So it's like, if you're really fucking smart, you're going to copy what's worked. You're going to copy the people and then you're going to put your own spin on it, right? right? Your own name, your own brand, your own vibe, your own thing. I mean, Conor McGregor is not the first dude to make whiskey. But why is his whiskey company worth over a billion dollars, right? Because he's got that mojo. He's willing to say shit that other people aren't you know, willing to say. So for the people that are hungry, it's like the only way to really prove yourself and test yourself is to go, yeah. is to do it. And that's where I think you separate the winners and the losers is there's a lot of people that will get super motivated, watch a YouTube video, go, yo, I mean, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to ball, I'm going to build this. But they're never going to take the jump. They're never going to put their, their money where their mouth is. They're never going to risk anything. And so they're always going to be in that space of, of not succeeding, not growing, not excelling, where the people that it truly become legends are insane at first. They're crazy at first. They're undead. All of the adjectives that you want to throw on those people, right. but those are the people that end up building big shit. So it's like, you know, with this day and age of having cell phones and data and information, it's like, it's, it's, it's almost harder to sit home and not win than it is to go fucking win. Cause you're watching other people win. you're watching all this shit through social media, I can only really fathom what it would be like to watch all that shit all day long and then know that you're not doing anything about it. It's so much easier today than when we grew up, like yeah. legitimately like, yo, you want to go meet a guy? You had to go to lunch. There was no slide up in the DMs because there were no DMs. It was right. like email, phone calls, lunch. That was it, you know? Or a fax. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, I was asking my kids the other day. I was like, do you guys know what a pay... My kids have never seen a pay phone before. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a pager. They don't even know what a pager is. I was talking to my son who's 17. I'm like, Black, he doesn't know what a Blackberry is. I used is, to sell right? Blackberries, dude. I was one of the I best... I sell cell phones like the, like the Nextels and the shit yeah, like that. Yeah, dude. And that's what's dope about today is the dude who's hungry. You have access to supercomputers. This is a fucking supercomputer, man. Yeah. You have access to every single thing. Every person that you want to meet is literally at your fingertips. So you have one of two choices, like actually go do something, cut your teeth, make the mistakes, learn and grow, or sit around and watch the other people that are actually fucking doing it. It's a vehicle for success for sure, 100%. cell phones are. And I remember walking into boardrooms when Blackberries first came out. I worked for Bell Atlantic that turned into Verizon mm -hmm. Wireless with yep. one of their best salespeople and sitting in a fucking boardroom going, this is the future. And they're like, fuck off. Mm -hmm. you know? So you had to convince them to do that. And it's funny that you sold phones. So the other thing I want to talk about that, that you mentioned is, is you mentioned them taking that leap. And I like to say, we were talking about it before the show started, is a lot of people in today's world, and my dad's one of them, and I love my old man, but he was a blue collar, yeah. play it safe guy. They play to not lose. Right. I mean, they don't play to win. They play to not lose. They play it safe. The unicorn comes by, they go, oh, that's risky. I'm not going to take a chance on that. I'm going to do the nine to five, get the benefits, yeah. get the 401k. And there's nothing wrong with those that, yep. that want to do that. But it's those that aren't happy doing that. Yeah. It's those that are struggling in life, looking at this going, this should be me. If that's how you feel, you should fucking do what oh. Sean just said. Take something that you like, see where somebody's successful at, and fucking make it yours. Spin right. yourself on it to grow a success. So I do want to touch on that. But the, the other thing I wanted to bring up that you talked about is people and all the adjectives that they use. Yeah. <clears throat> and I talked about this the other day, that 
like you've got a, a bomb ass Lamborghini here in the uh, in the warehouse, sick ass fucking Lambo. And uh, we were talking about Lambos and shit like that. But you get these people that don't have the ego. And I always say confidence and arrogance. There's a very thin line. It's one of my shirts. It's like it's a thin line and I like to ride it.